My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you about some recent innovations in heart monitoring technology, which I'm sure will revolutionize how we look for heart rhythm disturbances in patients. Uh, this technology is already here, it is available, and it is particularly relevant given the fact that we find ourselves um, in a pandemic. And this is why I was particularly keen to share this information with you. Now, the first thing to think is why heart monitoring? What is the advantage of heart monitoring? Well, there are two main reasons why patients need heart monitoring. The first is to try and diagnose the cause of symptoms, symptoms such as palpitations, lightheadedness, even blackouts. In such patients, if you can detect a heart rhythm disturbance on an ECG at the time when the patient is experiencing symptoms, then it allows you to make a diagnosis and the doctor can then tailor the treatment as per the diagnosis. The other reason to um, look for heart rhythm disturbances may be in asymptomatic patients, patients who are not experiencing any symptoms, but patients who are thought to be at high risk of heart rhythm disturbances and in whom the detection of a heart rhythm disturbance uh, may allow treatment which may modify their risk. Such patients are patients who have underlying heart disease or patients who may have experienced strokes. In such patients, detection of a, a silent heart rhythm disturbance such as atrial fibrillation uh, would change management. For example, at the moment, if a person has had a stroke, uh, then they're given an antiplatelet agent. However, if you can then find that that patient is having atrial fibrillation, then we know in those patients, an antiplatelet does not necessarily reduce the risk of strokes and therefore management changes and that patient is then put on an anticoagulant. So it has a very definite uh, impact on how you manage the patients if you can detect a heart rhythm disturbance. There are two important points to note here, that heart rhythm disturbances can be paroxysmal, meaning that they can come and go off their own accord. And therefore the duration of heart monitoring is crucial. The longer you can uh, monitor the patient for, the greater the chances of picking up a heart rhythm disturbance, the greater the chances that the patient may experience some symptoms during the monitoring period. And therefore, the more confidence you have in terms of making or excluding a diagnosis. The second uh, point to note is that ideally the monitoring should be continuous, meaning that the monitor should be recording every single heartbeat for the duration of the time that the monitor is on the patient. Uh, this is because some heart rhythm disturbances can be risky, but may be silent. So you may be experiencing the heart rhythm disturbance, you may not know anything about it, but you are still exposed to the risks. Uh, a lot of people have atrial fibrillation, they don't even know that they have atrial fibrillation. These people are at a higher risk of strokes, uh, but um, you know, they don't have any symptoms, so they may not necessarily go to their doctor. So it's really important to understand that continuous monitoring is really important. Now, currently, the way we do heart monitoring is we rely on these 24-hour halter monitors, okay? And there are several disadvantages with this technique. The first is that the halter monitor is a bulky device. It's a, it's a little box attached to some wires, which then attach to electrodes on the chest. To have the heart monitor, the patient has to come to hospital. The monitor then gets attached. The patient is then advised to go home with the monitor on. Because the uh, monitor is bulky, it's a little bit inconvenient. Patients are advised not to shower, etc. And then they are to bring the monitor back after 24 hours or even 48 hours. And then the, uh, the information is downloaded from the monitor, analyzed, and then the information is sent to the cardiologist. Sometimes uh, patients complain of having allergic reactions as well to the electrodes. So it's not clearly not very convenient for the patient who has to come to hospital twice at least. Uh, the chances of having typical symptoms during 24 hours, only 24 hours is low. Uh, in my experience, uh, the pickup is about one in 10. So for every 10 halters, I'll, I'll get the patient to complain of typical symptoms in one of those. Um, and the whole journey is particularly long because the patient, the, the hospital will only have a certain number of these devices to give out to patients. So patients have to wait in line for this device to come back, then another patient gets offered it, etc. So it's, it's a long journey, it's an inconvenient journey, and the diagnostic yield is very low. 
perhaps most importantly, it is uh, worth bearing in mind that the people who are most likely to have heart rhythm disturbances, which may result in an increased risk, are exactly those people who should at this point in time, given the COVID pandemic, not to be coming to hospital and exposing themselves unnecessarily. So those are the people who need this monitor, but those are the people who are putting themselves or who will end up putting themselves at a greater risk by coming to a hospital twice when they may not need to. And clearly this is where, you know, we need to be thinking um, of better ways of monitoring our patients. And this is where this new technology that I'm going to talk about comes in. I'm going to talk about something called wearable patch monitoring. monitoring. These are actually not new. I've been using them in my patients for about four years now uh, with excellent results, okay? They, they are available in the UK, uh, but unfortunately they've not routinely be taken, been taken up by the NHS, by NHS institutions, largely because of cost issues. When you will um, hear what I have to say, you will realize that they are actually very cost effective. Let me show you a patch monitor. This is the device, this is a patch, and that's it, right? There are no other leads, there's nothing else. And what happens is, this is a patch, it comes in a box, and that box can be sent out to the patient, and the patient just gets them in their letterbox. Uh, the patch will come with a set of instructions, such as um, written instructions, but also an instructional video. And the patient can then apply the patch themselves. And you have these two electrodes here, um, here, and these attach to the attach to uh, a couple of electrodes which are placed on the chest. And this patch attaches there like that. And as you can see, it has a little button here as well. Once this is on, uh, the battery comes on and the battery, uh, as soon as the battery comes on, the patch starts recording every single heartbeat for the duration of the time the patch is on the patient's chest. Now, or for the duration of the time that the battery is um, uh, alive for. Uh, and patches can be available in 24 hour, as 24 hour pa patches, 48 hour patches, seven day patches, and even 14 day patches. And the patch will record every single heartbeat for the duration of that, um, that time. Uh, the nice thing is because you also have this button here, you can actually press when when the patient experiences something, the patient can just press and that puts a little marker on this continuous recording, allowing the doctor to focus on those areas and that's particularly useful. In addition, the uh, device comes with a diary so that the patient can then also record um, what they're experiencing when they're experiencing it. And then what happens is once uh, the recording time is over, uh, the patient simply takes this off the chest, puts it back in the box it came in and posts it back. The device then reaches uh, a central place where the information is downloaded from this and these are disposed. And once the information is downloaded, a, t a physiologist will look at all the information, look at all the bits where you've picked up incidental heart rhythm disturbances and also where the patient has pressed the button, compile a report and get that sent to the cardiologist looking after the patient who will then make contact with the patient and discuss these results. Um, the really nice thing about these things is that you can wear, you can shower with them, you can, because they're so discreet, you can go to work, you can play sport, and it is not at all onerous to be wearing one. So in that sense, it is very convenient because the patients don't actually have to come to hospital. Uh, the diagnostic yield is much greater and actually they're very cost effective when you bear in mind uh, the cost of people having to come to, to a hospital uh, twice, uh, the, the, the chances of picking something up are far greater with longer monitoring. So even if you pick up atrial fibrillation in a few patients and potentially prevent a stroke, that in itself makes it hugely cost effective. I've been um, using these for about four years. I have sent them out to young patients, old patients, agoraphobic patients, and never had anyone really come back to me and say, oh, it's too difficult to apply. I've always had excellent recordings, and I for one will continue to use them for my patients. I think it is exactly at times like this, uh, when the NHS is stretched, uh, waiting lists are high, that this is exactly the kind of innovation that we need to, uh, to benefit our patients. So once again, thank you so much for listening to me. All the best.